afternoon, we're in for a real treat. We're here in San Francisco at SOCAP, a conference dedicated to the intersection of money and meeting. And I'm here with Ajeta from Frontier Markets, um, and we're going to explore a conversation about how to actually reach customers in, in the base of the pyramid, customers living on maybe $1 to $4 a day. Um, but before, before we get into your work with Frontier Markets, um, I'd love just to start a little bit with your story, how, how you got into microfinance and then transitioned into distribution and, and just what, what your path has been. So uh, while in college um, and in grad school, I um, started exploring you know, different types of um, s sectors or verticals um, yeah. in the nonprofit and development space. Mm -hmm. um, was always very frustrated because I felt like you know, the nonprofit sector was doing such great things, but you know, if the grants cut off, suddenly the program shut down. Absolutely. And so that kind of led me into starting to explore other verticals like microfinance. Yep. Microfinance is a very interesting area because, you know, you saw you're working in slums and you're working in poor villages. Uh, you're providing access to finance, which was something that was very important at the time. Absolutely. But you were also doing it with a service mission. I saw a very interesting turn that happened with microfinance, which was, you know, manufacturers that were not financial companies mm -hmm. suddenly were like, well, you know what, this is a great channel. Tried the model, didn't really work uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of different operational reasons. So that's why I decided to then, you know, kind of go in my own direction, take my lessons learned from microfinance mm -hmm. and other models, and then apply that to frontier markets. Mm -hmm. And so with, with frontier markets, you, you're trying to do something that I think most of the world thinks is impossible. You have, you know, a wildly audacious goal, although realistic at the right. same time, right. of reaching 30 million households. Um, getting uh, products that are going to socially benefit them into the hands of customers who are living on one to four dollars a day, right. uh, and to do that in the next four years. So, how do we get to all of them, and why do we know them? Yeah. Um, it's really becoming one with um, uh, with the locals. Uh, it's really about localizing things. It's about recruiting people that are from those villages themselves, mm -hmm. that are motivated because they want jobs, um, they want opportunities, they want to give back. We take we, we we look at those people as kind of being our root to market, you know, and yep. uh, before I can come to you and sell your product, they need to know if I'm here to stay, That's right? right? right. Uh, because a lot of people have tried this and a lot of people have sold something and then left, right? So they need to know what are my guarantees that I can trust you, hmm. right? So it's building that trust and yep. then it's word of mouth, right? So it's about, you know, balancing that need, understanding those households, and then at the same time making sure you have infrastructure that's there. Hmm. I mean, are you introducing products that are inconceivable in the minds of your customers? and? And, and if you are, how, how are you getting them excited to dish out their hard-earned cash and make that investment? You have to start with something that they know, understand, and want. Mm -hmm. You're going from taking products that are obvious to very inobvious or unobvious, but, yeah. but they trust you more because they realize they, that you do know them. So it's about you understanding how they think, mm. right, and why they think, and when they think, and how they prioritize and what they prioritize. Mm. The more you get to know your local household, hmm. the better you can serve them with innovative and interesting products. And how, I guess, how do you balance, or do you balance, between impact and, and profit? Right. And a lot of the words you're using, this sounds like, I mean, this is standard business, but how, how, how are you looking at it? We are very socially conscious. We have a very clear social mission. You know, we are going to reach poor households. We are going to try to bring the right kind of products for the right kind of households that are affordable. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that our products are socially motivated. Uh, we think that there's a better way to educate, a better way to reach out to households and actually take that consumerism that's there, not increase it, but actually adapt it to smarter mm -hmm. thinking and give them exposure for more information. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you're right. I do talk a lot as if it's just, it's a business, Absolutely. but it is, you know, Absolutely. every social enterprise is a very interesting, smart business. Because yep. at the end of the day, when you're talking about social responsibility, when you're talking about getting to know that household, when you're talking about wanting to really serve them for what they need, hmm. that's just smart business practices. You yep. know, yep. Responsibility is a huge part of what we're looking at. We really are talking about making an impact, yep. and we really do care about measuring that impact. Yep. Um, but at the same time, we want to show the world that you can be successful, you can be scalable, you can be profitable, yep. you can really build a large business um, hmm. out of your social responsibility that you started. Hmm. So. Well, I can hang out with you for a couple more hours. I know. But I think we went over time. <laughs> right, right. No, <laughs> so, fair enough. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and uh, we should be hanging out after this, though, too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you.